It's Gil Alexander. It's Kelly Midland. Hey, numbers game live from Bar Canada at the D. Did I say numbers game twice. I think I probably did. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Um, we have a delay at Augusta. We do. So we're gonna talk some Masters here. Some more Masters off the top. This delay must be great for sports books, by the way, because people who were already late to the de- to the uh, window or the app, yeah, still have some more time. You got about a half hour more, according to uh, when we now see the scheduled. Starting tea time, the first starting tea time at Augusta. Yeah, ten thirty Eastern. Eric Van Royen and Jake Knapp will get out there. I'm surprised you didn't say EVR. You love calling them EVR, like people know who <laughs> well, Eric Van Royen is. I had to dumb it down for the audience. Yeah. Okay, Gil, come on. It's just me and you. I say EVR. Eighty <laughs> eighth Masters Golf's first major of the year. Of course, uh, we'll get into our bets, uh, bets that we added here and that we have, and uh, a shout out to a certain shop and a certain, be- a certain betting vehicle, which you want to get into. And uh, Todd Wright, form, uh, g- a guy who's been on the show many times, the greatest radio host there ever was, in my opinion, uh, back all night with Todd Wright. He's not coming on the show, but he has a couple questions because he wants to talk Masters at the, at the top here. So he's going to do it via a couple questions. Uh, Zach Cohen, Zach and Crack today. Uh, we'll get some NBA thoughts from Zach as the season winds down. Everybody's playing tomorrow night. Everybody's playing Sunday night to wrap up the season. We do have some games today as well. Um, and it's, of course, unscripted with the crack man. Oh, and one more thing today. It is UFC 300. Kelly. Boom, boom, boom. It's a banger. It is. Twelve fights comprising a big banger at UFC 300. Jordan Sherwood will uh, be around uh, to talk with us, co-host of the unnamed MMA podcast about the Masters. Um, I only have two outrights that I made pre-flop, as I mentioned uh, before this week. Hideki Matsuyama and Brooks Kepka. Uh, got them both just over 20 to 1, which are the best numbers. You you got them a long time ago at better numbers. H- Hideki. Good number on Brooks. Yeah, it's a good number. Both both are uh, just just north of 20 to 1, plus 20, 50 if you want to be exact. I added one top five in Scheffler and one top 10 in Finau. Um, those are my only top five and top 10 positions. Here's where it gets fascinating, Kelly. And you, shout out to you. Can I do a shout out to you if you're right in front of me? Hey, thanks, man. I don't know if that's proper. (laughs) I heard that shout out on the uh, the numbers game this morning. Thanks. Yeah, I don't know if that's a proper shout out for (laughs) him. So MGM, proud former sponsor of this show, Mm -hmm. uh, they have. And multiple books are doing this. And multiple books are doing this. Correct. But here in Nevada. You're yeah, right, yes. Of Let's options that, that we have. Again, once this state gets legalized sports betting, boy, is it going to be something. But here in Nevada, this is the only shop that has this. So they not only have first-round leader, mm-hmm. but they also put in top five and top ten first round. Yep. So after the first round, top fives and top tens. But here's the, uh, here's the rub, and I don't mean rub. Here's the good thing. They pay out all ties. So it's not a dead heat if you finish in a massive tie at five. In top five, first round, it's not a massive tie at 10 if you finish top 10 in first round. That is a, you are looking as a better for any kind of incremental edge that comes your way. So there's that. There's the fact that this is a smaller field to begin with than most tournaments. It's also that it's a smaller field filled, I shouldn't say filled, but where a more than negligible portion of them are guys who won the Masters during the Eisenhower right, administration. Yeah. A smaller field than even the field says it is. That's correct. So 89 total, but really less than yeah. that, right? Because I hate to include Tiger, but I guess I have to. I mean, The for- Tigers of the world aren't, aren't going to lead after the first round, but I'm talking about, you know, the Bernard Langer types as well. Yeah, yeah. The, um, uh, uh, and, and look, for one round, should, could those guys go low? Yeah, they could. They could in one round. Right, but you get the idea that it's – it's a smaller group that you would think you would have to contend with. And you could say this for any tournament that looks to be... Comp- so the U.S. Open comes to mind, mm-hmm. right? U.S. Open traditionally is one where the scoring is more difficult than your average tournament. Um, it is set up that way. That would be another tournament where this kind of thing is just such a smart betting vehicle. Yeah, where scoring is going to be tough, right? Guys are going to go tough. really low. So it's not going to be a wide variance of scores, right? So, right, that's right. It's not going to be, somebody's not going to shoot 10 under, then 7 under, then 4 under. No, it's going to be all tight. And so having that ties pay, all, you know, all ties paid is such a big thing that you're almost, can I use the old Washington Nationals 2019 thing? 
you're almost obligated to make bets in these markets. I, I mean, it's it's been the market, the golf betting market that I've been the most fascinated with this season so far and that I've been tinkering around with. Uh, I haven't bet heavily into it, but there's been the few tournaments so far where uh, the Valspar, for whatever reason, really comes to mind uh, of where I kind of sunk, sunk some good money into it. Uh, didn't really have good results at that one, but it's really... It's kind of that process that I've been trying to develop through the season where you're like, okay, well, tournaments, like you just laid out, tougher scoring. If there's a sm short, smaller field, these make more sense in them. And I, that's not to say they're priced incorrectly. I, I, I'm not I'm not making that leap oh, at no, all, no, no, you know no. what I mean? Right. But I do think there is some quality value if you could isolate which tournaments the, the, these are more valuable. And let me just also say real quick, I know Bernard Lunger is not playing. I was using him as an example, right, as, as yeah, a former. Like ACL yeah. tear or something No, like he that. tore his Achilles. Yeah. Well, I got it on our Achilles uh, email thread. <laughs> Everybody ever just popped Sorry. one. But like, Bernard checking in. I just popped mine. Um, Todd Wright, again, former host of uh, All Night with Todd Wright. He did other radio shows, too, but that's the most famous one back in the ESPN overnight back in the day. So he has a couple questions. Here's the first one. Um... Scotty Scheffler, who is the short shot to win this tournament, average plus 450, we'd say, as a pre-flop oh, short real, shot. Real quick, I guess I should say, I, play, I played Hideki and Xander first-round leaders today and top 10s then with both. Oh, flashy. Guys. Let's put yours up on the board here. I didn't have the first rounds up. Oh, either. you didn't. Okay. Yeah. Um, what did you add first round? Hideki and Xander, both first-round leader, and then I played them in the top 10 market at okay. about plus 250. So you basically proliferated them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. As, as one should, right? One should correlate their, their outrights. I mean, generally. and what's awesome about that is, in theory, you could hit, I could hit three of, of three of four of those. And in theory, you could miss out on all. Oh, of course. That's yeah. right. But that's, I think that's how you, you obviously fit. So, first thing Todd asked, and I think this is a valid question. We just came off an NCAA tournament, right? Where UConn was consensus best team in the country. They were the short shot to win the NCAA title. Um, some people had better numbers on them from, from the past. But there was some talk right before the tournament of people saying the exact same thing we're saying about Scotty Scheffler now, which is, yeah, but too short to play pre-flop. In fact, we've said here on this show, I'm going to wait to see if Scheffler has a, you know, yeah. not so awesome first round and then perhaps jump in on him. Is this UConn all over again? Of course it could be. Yeah. It's got, uh, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll take it a step further. I would, I mean, obviously I know golf better than college basketball, but this would be way less shocking. Way less. <laughs> Way less shocking if, yeah. if Scotty Scheffler just rolled through this tournament. I mean, on the one hand, yes. On the one hand, no. But it's, you know, it's the world number one. UConn was kind of the world number one, too. But, yeah. Anyway, we're, it's worth bringing up here within the delay. But yes, Scotty Scheffler is we, that good. Yes, because yes. we haven't said it yet. And we're looking for other things that we haven't said this way. That's one of them. Um, and I think it's worth bringing up because, yeah, a lot of us are going to sort of be like, like cut to tomorrow where he's up three strokes on the field. We're just going to be like, oh, that was smart. Right. Yeah. It, uh, it could easily happen. Yeah. The other question, uh, and this has to do with, well, it doesn't really, I don't know if it comes into play now or if it doesn't because the weather obviously came earlier than we thought it would. Yeah, yeah. So to, uh, let, let me clean that up a little bit. So we're, yeah. we're going we're gonna to tee off here in about 20 minutes. Yeah. It slides everybody back today, yeah. right? So there are likely those last few groups are probably not going to finish today. So I, it's not something that I'm running to redo bets or get a bunch of uh, different bets you didn't, in. You didn't ask, let me ask the question. That's what Todd was going to ask oh, about. Okay. Yeah, no, here's a question. You, you be, <laughs> Go ahead, Gil. You have no, a question about the weather. No, this is what I was <laughs> saying. Does this, Todd's question was, does the first round leader value now shift to guys who will finish tomorrow morning since weather tomorrow looks dry and less windy? Although we're hearing conflicting things about the wind too, right? He moved to play to Kepka as first-round leader, thinking he gets at least his last four holes in tomorrow. So there's that school of thought, and then there's the school of thought of people who start late-ish today, but not so late that they don't finish. I guess the whole question is, do you even bother your brain with all of that? Um, a little bit. I actually would be going the other way from what Todd's doing. That's what I said to him. I I, or I, the other way. I around. would be targeting it. And we got a lot of questions about this yesterday. I feel like we yeah. talked about this yesterday. Now that we know what tea times are, and the afternoon actually looks re looks relatively dry. It looks like it's going to be relatively dry out there. The wind is going to be whipping around. It will be a little bit more today than tomorrow. But I'd have, rather have a guy that's going to get out there and get a full full 18 in today instead of having to start his rounds 
stop his round, get back out there tomorrow uh, and play, me, me play in the morning. My instinct says that. But but again, it should be pointed out, this is all very gray area. R- exactly. Yeah. Yes. And I'm also like, it looks like it's going to be dry this afternoon. Who the hell knows? I don't know if you know this, Kelly, but weather forecasting, not an exact yeah. science. I mean, I, I mean, anybody was watching ESPN earlier this morning or anything like that. Like, I saw a, it was probably six... No, it was like 5 o'clock our time. It was beautiful in Augusta. They were still waiting, though, for one little rain cell to come through, so then they were going to start play after that. After you start the quarry that you're going to start to uh, surface tennis courts around the country. I'm start the quarry. I want to invest in the company. Oh, invest in the company. You don't want to actually do the digging? No, no. Okay. No. Uh, but after you do whatever you're doing with I that. look like a guy that could survive in a quarry? Quarry life? Actually. <laughs> I mean, Fred Flintstone worked in a quarry, and you're kind of Flintstone-esque. <laughs> wow, really, okay. If you want to know the truth. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I say that in the most lovable way, by the way. No, I was going to say, then you, we should we got to start that service where you, like, track weather forecast, like local weather person's predictions on weather. Someone has to start this service. Oh, yeah. Ken Pomeroy, by the way, Ken Pom himself used to be a, a, a meteorologist back in the day. Well, he's still a meteorologist, I guess. You never lose that. But he used to really care about weather way more than college basketball. Yeah. I, I think he made the right move. Uh, meteorologist. Great job. Are you offended by my Flintstone comparison? I mean, Not at all. Yeah, you'd be great in a court. Better than I would be. Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, we'll come back. More golf. Basketball was that going. Uh, and this Cleveland Guardians bet still going. Update coming up. Numbers Game Visa, the Sports Betting Network. A numbers game on v the Sports Betting Network. Oh, uh, you should be starting your morning every morning with a daily dose of winning strategies, insider tips, and the latest buzz with the free v daily newsletter. It's where Bill 80's morning, or excuse me, his night becomes your morning. That's right. In today's newsletter. Hey, 15 minutes till the Masters starts. Yes. There's a whole lot of Masters stuff in there. Lots of bets from everybody on the network. Get it now. Still time to wager. That's right. That's uh, today's newsletter. Get expert analysis and the latest odds delivered straight to your inbox absolutely free. Don't cost you nothing. In the words of Ashford and Simpson, beeson.com slash newsletter to subscribe. Skill Alexander, it's Kelly Bidlin, live from Bar Canada at the D. And again, the Masters uh, delayed for another 15 minutes, and they will get things going at Augusta. Uh, Zach and Crack, though, on Thursday. Let's get the first portion of that in. Zach Cohen joins us uh, to discuss multiple sports, but specifically, actually, I should say, tennis and the NBA. Vicent writer and editor at Betting on X, courtesy of the Progressive Guest Line. Good morning, Zach. How you doing, man? Good morning. How are you? Doing very well. I see you. Uh, whenever I see the head turn, I know you must be sweating something. What are you, what are you sweating right now? I have Djokovic to win in straight sets against uh, Musetti, which started off about as poorly as it possibly could have. Uh, he went down a break in the first set, but then, you know, he got a bad line call. The crowd started booing him. He started <laughs> he started to, you know, orchestrate the boos and kind of went into that Novak Djokovic uh, God mode. So he ends up, <laughs> he ends right. up winning this. He presses God mode. He, he gets re- – <laughs> he is not – let's put it this way. For in the, in the annals of tennis history – Federer and Nadal will always be remembered as, like, not only the greatest players, but the height of being gentlemen. Djokovic will be remembered as one of the greatest players, if not the greatest, alongside of them, but not quite the gentleman in some moments that those two guys were. Yeah, and it's funny because I yeah. do think he's probably a nice guy. Yes. It seems like he is, but he definitely plays the role of the villain just because, <laughs> he loves you know, it. he had the stuff during COVID. He does egg, uh, egg on the crowd, so they do kind of hate him, and he definitely gets a little bit of flack for just not being Federer and Nadal. All right, you have a match and you have a future that we want to get to here momentarily. I just want to say this. Again, all of our picks of the network, uh, not only Zach's, not only mine in tennis, but every guest, every host at the network in every sport is at com slash picks for subscribers. Um, my hardcore season was great. And for those, again, uh, on a numbers game, I usually give them out if we're stateside and the matches haven't happened yet, but we're in Europe, the matches have already happened. And I typically only mention them if they, you know, if they're dramatic or whatever. Um, quite frankly, if you've missed the picks uh, since the beginning of clay season, you haven't missed much. We're, we're just spinning our wheels, really. Um, we were up 26 units at our high. Now we're up 25 units. So it's not, it, it hasn't really gone anywhere. But this morning, let me just say this. I had maybe the most improbable, call it lucky, whatever whatever word you want to use, the most improbable win I think I've ever had, given where I was in the match. Uh, I had the over in the Zverev-Tsitsipas match. 
Tsitsipas win. It's going it's looking like it's going to a tiebreaker in the first set. It doesn't. Tsitsipas ends up winning at 7-5. So I'm like, okay, well, now instead of getting to four, Zverev's got to get to five in the, in the second set. And clearly then Zverev just goes into collapse mode. He immediately gets broken. It's five love, right? It's seven, five, five love. And at that point, I'm like, well, I mean, this is long gone, has no chance. And I just went, just look, just to see, is he even going to get baked? Is he going to get bageled? Is he going to get breadstick, right? He was up 40 to love, down five to love, Zverev was. Then all of a sudden, Tsitsipas gets to a set point. He, he reels off the next four points. I look away. I'm doing whatever I am to get prepared for the show. And I go back just to see, again, did you get, did you get bageled? And it's 5-2. Like, he won that, and then he broke. He got one of the breaks back. And then I go, I take a shower, I come back, I'm like, 5-5. Five, five. Like, that's the most unbelievable, <laughs> anyway, the most unbelievable win ever. And so that makes up for a lot of heartache in the past. But I just want to point out that uh, you have to acknowledge when you're lucky, too. And that was definitely. Yeah, I was going to bring up yeah. the, I was going to bring up that match that I didn't even have anything on it just because, you know, I did notice that it went over in a match that definitely should not have got over. Should not crazy, have. So. Yeah. And since the boss won it, by the way, in a tiebreaker in the second set anyway. So that was just unbelievable. What do you have? What is your play today and what is the future that you played? Uh, the only thing I have left today is I have Lorenzo Sonigo plus one and a half uh, sets against Hugo and Bear, and I also sprinkled the money line on Sonigo to win outright. I just think, you know, this is a matchup that it's 2-2 in the past, but both of the clay court matches have gone to Sonigo. Uh, and Bear, you know, really good player, has gotten up to the top 15 now, you know, really powerful serve, really big forehand, but I do think he struggles on clay still. He's, you know, he's a player with a losing record on clay, uh, and it's actually a really bad record, and then over the last 52 weeks, it hasn't gotten much better he's three and six on clay in that time span so even though he's gotten a lot better it hasn't happened on this surface sonigo meanwhile has won more matches on clay than him bears even played and yeah it's just uh, it's a bit of a matchup that's given him trouble in the past he beat him in straight sets at the french open so you know sonigo's not playing great tennis right now but i do think it's a value play for me i think it's a good one yeah and the futures play that you that you just uh put in makes a whole lot of sense share that with us if you would yeah, I took Yannick Sinner at plus 450 to win the French Open. I think that, you know, you look at the odds right now, Alcaraz is the, you know, heavy favorite to win. Uh, Djokovic isn't too far behind. I just don't think that there should be this big of a gap between those two and Sinner. I think that Sinner, you know, obviously most of his success so far has come on hard courts. But, you know, before that, he was a player that we kind of looked at as a clay court, not specialist, but we looked at that as his best surface because he had, you know, such good movement for a guy his size, such a, you know, you know kind of well well-rounded game. Uh, now you look at him, he's got the power, but he hasn't really lost any of that finesse. He's actually added to it, if anything. He's got a really good drop shot now. He can play at the net. Uh, you're talking about a guy that's top five in the world in both hold percentage and break percentage. And, you know, 23-1 and one to start the 2024 season, that kind of speaks for itself. So I think that you're looking at a guy that I think is just as good as the others, I'd argue right now that he's the best player in the world. So I think that you're getting a really good price on him. That's definitely going to get lower if he wins one of these clay court tournaments in the lead up to. Is Zach Cohen going to have an Iga Sinner Kiniela for the French Open? Are you going to do that as well? <laughs> I might, honestly. I was looking at it no. yesterday. Like, I couldn't figure out anything to do on the women's side for the French Open. Yeah, if sure. it's not Iga, it's nothing. It's nothing. That's right. Um, okay. Let's shift to the NBA. As I mentioned earlier on the show, so tonight uh, there are five games. And that will get every team to 80 on the button, which, of course, never happens until this moment in the uh, NBA season where everybody has the same number of games. Because then all 30 teams play on Friday, and then all 30 teams play on Sunday. No NBA on Saturday. Do you have anything amongst these five today? The only thing I'm playing is uh, the Knicks minus two and a half against the Celtics. I just think that Boston has uh, Brown, Holiday, Porzingis, Horford, and Tatum. All listed as questionable. The game really means nothing for the Celtics. I think that you're going to see a few of those guys sit out. Uh, that's enough for me to take the Knicks. I think that if any of those guys are out, you'll see a good enough effort from New York. They're not like the Suns. They could beat teams that are shorthanded. Uh, we know that they're going to try every night. So I think this is a team that should win tonight. And I think that's a small enough number to go in on the spread. In general, and I'll just say as, as the postseason now approaches, obviously play in first before playoffs, uh, both East and West. Give us the team in each conference. I, I don't know if you have to give it each, but it, w whether overrate, overrated or underrated based on where you have them and where you think the general market is. 
I mean, in the West at this point, I just said it. I do think the Suns are overrated in the market. I know JVT tweeted it last night, but, you know, they're still being priced for the team that has the big three. But you're seeing now that they can't come with the right effort every night. Like, just, they just something hasn't clicked on both ends of the floor, honestly. Like, we've talked all season about how the defense needs to be better for Phoenix, but the offense needs to be better, too. Like, they, you know, retained Kevin Young, one of the world-renowned offensive uh assistant coaches in the league last year it hasn't worked out so i think that you're going to see some changes from the suns in the offseason after an early exit i actually think that they're a threat to lose both play-in games at this point just because i don't think that they play with enough heart or you know purpose i think that they're a team that can easily get bounced really fast and uh, i don't know they can the eastern conference i i have my doubts about milwaukee still i just don't think that they play well enough on the defensive end. I think that the Giannis injury adds something to it. And you throw on top of that, that they might get a meeting with like, you know, the Knicks or something in the second round. That's a team that I would expect them to lose to. All right. We don't have spreads for these. We actually don't have the matchups. We don't have the home court specifically settled. But in the East right now, uh, it would be Heat at Sixers for 8-7. It would be Hawks at Bulls for 10-9. In the West, it would be Kings at Suns for 8-7. It would be Warriors at Lakers right at the moment, but the Warriors control their own destiny for home court in the 10-9 game. Do you just have a, with, without knowing sights and spreads, and even if those are actually going to be the four matchups, which it looks like they might be, but we don't know for sure. Do you have a general feeling about who is going to crap out early or who's going to make a run here? I would say Sixers win to get the seven, uh, and I'd probably go Bulls get the eight, and then in the other side of the West, I'd go Kings and Warriors. Kings and Warriors, okay. And of those four, the most likely to make a run into the postseason, meaning at least win one series, would be? Sixers. I think that Embiid looks good enough. I think that the rotation is you know, kind of intact. I think this is a team that was really good to start the year. They kind of have everybody back. I know the health of Melton is something to look at, look at moving forward. But if they do avoid the Celtics, I think that we're going to see the Sixers play the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. Kelly's, Kelly's remark yesterday off air, I think, was the best, where you said we could be staring at the greatest Western Conference playoffs juxtaposed against the worst Eastern Conference playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Giannis injury, if, that, if yeah. that's a prevailing issue, we could really be looking at that. Zach, thank you. Appreciate it, man. No problem. Thanks for having me on. At Betting on X for Mr. Cohen, once again, um, decent writer and editor, courtesy of the Progressive Guest Line. A little more golf talk as the Masters is about to begin on well, a Guardians check-in as well. Numbers Game, Visa, the Sports Betting Network. A numbers game on v the sports betting network. For a limited time, we're offering two weeks of our exclusive betting splits for free. Just sign up at v slash splits. The v betting splits page is updated with DraftKings odds every five minutes, so you can see changes in all the action. Find out where the public is betting based on the number of tickets and where the money does not match the public opinion. You can check out not just today's action, uh, but future events as well, of course. Take advantage of this limited time offer. Visit v slash splits now to claim your free two-week access to v betting splits. Splits. Don't strike out on potential winnings. Visit VEASAN.com slash splits and start making smarter bets today. It's Gil Alexander. It's Kelly Bidlin. Uh, it occurs to me I was reading that promo perfectly timed because you know who we got as our next guest? Who we got? Some humans are just luckier than others. Former co-host of the great radio program and television program, Primetime Action. Now current co-host of The Handle, which he does with Mike Somich, noon Eastern on the weekend, Saturdays and Sundays here at the network. It's the great Matt Brown, everybody, courtesy of the Progressive Guest Line in Atlanta, Georgia. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing well, man. Glad to be on here with you guys as I, uh, as I make the trek over to check off a bucket list item here. You have never been to the Masters, and this the 88th edition you are going. Can you share with everybody, because I'm sure, you know, 95%, if not 98% of the audience hasn't been there either, but they're trying to. How did you get so lucky this year? Well, Gil, so here's the thing. Despite the fact that I am me, I actually do have rich and successful friends. And um, in society, what I've learned throughout the course of my years is rich and successful people like to hang out with other rich and successful people. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so somewhere along the way, my orthopedic surgeon buddy of mine, who was a, a roommate of mine in college, and you know, despite all the facts that I know about him, I would still let him operate on me, uh, 
befriended some other doctors and uh, whenever he was doing his fellowship and one of the guys ended up at a practice here in Atlanta and uh, they throughout the course of it, they found a guy who was, who comes from, you know, we talk about this, like you hear about this in the South, but like, this is really and truly one of those stories, like old money. Like this guy came from, from old money. Like the money has been in his family for yes, like a, a couple hundred years years and whatever um it comes to find out this guy gets you ready for this This guy gets 40 badges a year oh my what? god 40 he gets i guess been in his family since this thing got going or, so, or whatever or something. got the first 40 and, uh, <laughs> yeah nothing, nothing so, good like old money you know what i mean i guess there was four of them that that came up and the their little their text chain that they have going some guy goes Hey, I don't know if anyone wants to go to the Masters, but it looks like I think I, I think I have access to four badges. And oh. instantly, like twenty people, like I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. I'll take it. So they they ended up chopping it up. So I'm going on Friday. Someone had it for today, which unfortunately for them, because it is uh, it is not great weather here uh, currently. But and then we're taking them for Friday, and then someone else is taking them for Saturday, and someone else is taking them for Sunday. But I, I at least got one of the days of them, and I'm very happy about it. All right, before we get to your your picks and your thoughts here, what is your Friday strategy? Are you a stay at one whole guy and let him play through, or you a follow a certain player or two around so the only thing that i definitely have on the agenda is to at least go watch a hole or two of tiger because i can't shake that he hadn't announced anything obviously but like i can't shake that this might be his last one like if this goes very poorly of him trying to walk this course and his body just completely shuts down on him like it did you know, the last time we saw him, he couldn't finish because because of his body. So I can't shake that maybe this is the last time that he plays this, at least competitively, you know. I mean, and so um, I'm going to at least see a couple of holes of Tiger. But past that, I'm just kind of going to take it all in. I'm just really going to take it all in. No no, no set strategy. Just wander aimlessly and, and, uh, and take in all the beautiful things. All right. Got to do amen corner, though. Got to do that, right? Got to, yes. Definitely got to yes. do that. Yes, okay. absolutely. All right, so how did how did you bet this? So I made a. I'm sure this is something you guys have talked about on the program throughout the course of the week. It's it's the only golf tournament where where the odds have been up forever, right? So I did get a couple of guys a little bit earlier, um, and, and the numbers honestly drifted to a point where it wasn't they weren't all that much better. Uh, I, I took Will Salatoris at 49. You could have gotten him as high as 40, 45, something like that um, before a tournament anyway. So it wasn't like I got that much better of a number. Um, but the, the thing about Will Salatoris is he is just unbelievably good at these big tournaments and hard courses and things like that. You know, Kelly, a lot of people listening to the, to the show right now are in models. But if you if you plugged in last 24, you plugged in last 36, you didn't, you didn't see Will Salatoris' name. You really had to go back to pre-injury. And he was playing through all of that injury stuff, and, and his numbers just, just tanked, and his play tanked. But if you go back and, and plug in pre-injury Will Salatoris, he was, he was likely in the top five of all of your models like he was for me. And so I believe he's healthy. He says he's healthy. His play so far has shown that he is healthy. And so I went ahead and, and, and played some Will Salatoris. Um, the, the other guy that I, I played – pre-turn it ended up being the, the super hot pick maybe the pick of the tournament so far everybody's on Hideki so mm-hmm. um fade at your own you know you know fade fade if you want to fade you know everybody else out there because Hideki is is getting all the love I saw last night before I went to bed he had fallen down to like 14 to 1 at one of the books which is just absurd but his his form as good as anyone in golf I mean just absolutely has the skill set because he's gotten it done here before as we know and his putting is a liability all the time, but putting is neutralized on a course that is so incredibly hard, like Augusta National. So I uh, really did like that. A couple of others, and I know Kelly bet uh, Wyndham Clark as well, but for me, Wyndham Clark just checked all the boxes and, and everything I was looking for here. He's a long hitter, good with his long irons, he's good around the green, he puts well, and that's just more of a bonus than anything else. Like I said, I didn't I didn't put, wait, put putting into my model this week, but he does every single thing that I'm looking for. And he does every single thing that I'm looking for. Well, and, and I, I look at a, a guy like Wyndham Clark and I think that he started out as just a, this, this cool story of, Oh, there's this guy who went to a sports psychologist and now he turned his game around. He's got his, Oh, and this, and this is such a fun little great story to talk about. 
to carrying it over into this year and competing yet again in big time tournaments against big time fields. Like he might just be one of the 10 best golfers in the world right now. And so I'll take advantage of that fat number that was attached to him. The last one's Cam Young. And it's, it was mainly just, it was just a fit thing. I know Cam Young has a one. I know Cam Young is, is a guy that if you bet on him, has been super frustrating, but he just, the number drifted way too out. 55 to one on a guy that possesses the length and possesses the long irons, possesses all those things that we were checking and putting in our models this week. I, I, I played the number. I played where he was showing up in the models, but um, probably the one that I'm, I'm least confident in. Top 20 on Joaquin Neiman. Did you end up with any uh, FRL or any matchups? I did. Um, I ended up, and I ended up playing a little bit of outright on, on Neiman as well. And this was something I mentioned on, something I mentioned on long shots this week that, that I, I didn't have it at the time that we recorded it, but did want to go ahead and, uh, but it ended up doing it. He drifted to 30 to one in a couple of places before I took off yesterday. And, and it was, uh, a little bit too much for me of the drift on, on Joaquin Neiman. If you talk about consistency, just been as consistent as, as possible out there. A guy that you can, that you can absolutely uh, seems like rely on week in week out right now, despite the fact that all we have is the Liz results. Uh, yeah. I mean, Gil, I don't, I don't have all of them off the top of it, but I, I went after Colin Morikawa. Um, any, any, any head, to, any head to head, any grouping, stuff like that. I, I attacked Colin Morikawa pretty good, and I went after Patrick Cantlay pretty good as well. Um, two guys that have been really good on tour and have been really good players but are not in form right now. And not only not in form, they are way, way out of form. And Augusta National is not the course where you walk out there and, and just fix all the things that have been ailing you. So I actually went after both of those guys pretty good. All right. Uh, a fate of Morikawa and Cantlay in general for Matt. All right. Um, I, by the way, I buried also the headline, not only the co-host of the handle, but of course, co-host of the greatest podcast there ever, golf podcast there ever was, uh, Long Shots. It's called Long Shots, which Matt uh, hosts with Wes Reynolds and Kelly Bidlin. Um, and of course, is available where all podcasts are distributed. Visit vsan.com slash podcast. I said, Matt, uh, before I let you go, uh, that every one of those episodes ought to end with you and Wes in a shouting match. And then Kelly trying to break it up and then it goes to black. I think that will really step up the, the uh, listenership to something that's already so kind of yeah. So just kind of Real Housewives it, something yeah, like that? Yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, that's right. Like that. That's right. right. Real Housewives and Long Shots. Uh, listen, drive safely yeah. from Atlanta. Uh, and remember, uh, pay mind, be mindful of the speed limit at all times, Matt. We, we hope you yes, have a we'll great do, we'll, we'll, full We'll do all of that. I appreciate you guys, and, uh, and good luck to everyone out there. All right. Have a great time. Matt Brown's headed to the Masters, everybody. Yeah. Kind enough to uh, talk to us, courtesy of the Progressive Guest Line from Atlanta, Georgia. He's at the uh, airport, but you know how Matt travels. He's like in some lounge. That's why it sounded so good. <laughs> I don't know. I think he's out of the airport. Yeah, he's, he's so he's meeting. Oh, yeah, he's meeting people. Then they're going to Augusta. Oh, I yeah. thought they told us he was at the airport right before. Oh, you said Atlanta. You're right. Yeah. You're right. He did. Okay. Before we go to break here and crack, here's the the biggest question I have for those who are uh, traveling around and they might not be able to watch the Masters all day long, and they're going to have to follow scores. Should they be on the Masters website? Should they be on ESPN's website? What should they be on? What's yeah, the Masters app? Masters app. Yeah. Best scoring, quickest scoring of all. For me, I mean, I don't think the other ones are horribly bad, but yeah, I, I know some people freak out. About some of them lag, yeah. big time. Yeah. All right. First twosome is supposed to go off, and then it's threesomes from now on. EBR starting things off. Crackman is next. Unscripted with Crackman. Bill Krakenberger, exclusively on a numbers game at Visa and the Sports Betting Network. the sports betting network there's never been a better time to have skin in the game with DraftKings Sportsbook because right now we have a visa exclusive offer for new DraftKings customers earn a $500 bonus bet for every $1,000 you wager you can earn up to $2,500 worth of bonus bets in your first three days on DraftKings don't wait download the app now use code ANG when you sign up and earn a $500 bonus bet for every $1,000 you wager now Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Unscripted with Crack Man, Bill Krakenberger. Woo! Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you guys doing, all right? That was a little loud in my ears. I'm yeah, not sure I have my eardrums, but uh, oh my. Um, can we? St- I, I want to start with this because... Yeah. 
um, there are famous people who pass away. Sometimes we don't acknowledge it. Sometimes we do. This is one of the... Uh, for, this is going to be a, a very dicey one for, for people to uh, go through, but I feel more awkward if I don't bring it up. But according to the family, and I believe according to his son, this is a statement uh, that we just got, and it looks like it is confirmed. On April 10th, our father, Orenthal James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. During this time of transition, his family asked that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace. A statement from his family said... Uh, O.J. Simpson has passed away. And, of course, O.J. Simpson, um, who, let's state the facts first, was uh, was found not guilty of criminal charges uh, of the, uh, the murders of uh, Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman and then was found guilty in the civil case, um, but in the public court of opinion is largely believed to have committed the murders. I think that's probably the, the language one uses on mainstream media when they talk about this. Um, but O.J. Simpson has passed away. So I don't want to not acknowledge it because that would seem awkward, but there you go. Um, that is the breaking news of the morning for those outside of our little cocoon because we're all concerned about our master's bets this morning. Much more concerned about my master's bets. Do you bet heavy on this? I, I bet a lot on this. Yeah, I bet a lot on this 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 week. Um, couldn't bring myself. I'll tell you, th there's a bet that Circa offered. Well, a couple places offered that I've seen it, but Circa had the best odds on it. The yes and no on Scheffler. All I'm hearing is everyone saying how great this guy. Oh, he's playing Tigeresque, and he's. A, I think the lay in 650 was a great bet, but I just couldn't bring bring myself. You know, like do I lay 19.5 to win three grand? The 19.5 means more to me than the three grand means. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, So repeat the bet again. The bet is what? W Will Scheffler, you can have the field against Scheffler and the that's Masters. What you, that's what you're doing. You're betting the field against Scheffler. I, I didn't do it. Oh, I, you didn't? I, I did not, but I think it was, I, I think I, I made a mistake because I, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And then, then it went to 680, 690. This morning it was 700. The okay. lane, lane seven to one. Six. Okay, but you went 19, you immediately went to 19.5 to three. Could you? Well, would, would Bill Krakenberger have done less than that? N no, I'm saying, yeah, I guess I could bet a dime uh, to win a dime. Now that's even that'll even mean you know mean less a dime. No, I know, but I mean, was there a was there a? I guess the proportion is the proportion, and you don't care. Yeah, uh, you know. I I just thought that that I thought I thought it was a good bet. I, I thought the no, listen, everyone bets yes bets on things because that's the only option they have. Certain places like Circa, like uh, there's like two other ones that have yes and no bets, or the field versus the, um, you know, against a certain person like Scheffler. Um, but that being said, I, uh, I, I did bet um, a plethora of matchups. And, and uh, I like it. I like it that you dive into this tournament. Yeah. Well, no, actually, I bet golf every week. I just this is the one that's more publicized to talk about. Uh, let me, I, I think you could still bet this. So I'm going to give the, everyone a play. I think it's a really good bet. Uh, Matsuyama against... Spieth. You too. Oh, you guys on it too? And, well, not that particular matchup. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm on that exact matchup. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Kelly is. Oh, but yeah. Everybody's on Matsuyama. All right. well, yeah. that's, well, that's dead. But um, <laughs> no. no. Matsuyama, yeah. Matsuyama, I think, uh, you know, th he's won here. Spieth's won here too. But Spieth won here, I think, 2015, a pretty long time ago. But he. There was a moment. It, it is worth bringing up. There was a moment where, as a golf fan public and not all, not only just betters but also as just golf fans there was a moment in time where it looked like jordan spieth could be live to win every masters oh, every year during that three-year period yeah. he was he, he was amazing too and then he just kept talking and uh you know he's talking himself <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, i'm just kidding no. <laughs> he's ke kelly's favorite <laughs> golfer because the amount he yaps on a golf course <laughs> oh okay my favorite least favorite what do you think should i uh what iron seven iron six iron i don't know seven iron or six iron he just does not stop talking oh wow oh my god okay um, yeah. So, so last year, of course, you guys know. You, you know. You know. I actually went. I went there last year. Oh, yeah. how we do not. How great we still, shot. Can I yeah. just say a year later? Thank you again. Oh yeah. For those who missed it, uh, you are not allowed to take cell phones onto the premises. Correct. How did we let you in the ball? premises Bill right. Krakenberger. so you're not allowed to take it onto the premises. So Bill stationed himself right outside of Magnolia Lane. Yes. Uh, you could see that little scooter deal you were using. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. in the background. I, but you yeah. held up your, your held phone, up phone, and you did, what, two, three segments I with did us? a couple yeah. segments. Yeah. It was great. It was great. You know what it is. 
you have to weigh things out. So the next week I go to Hilton Head every year, 20-some years now. Oh. Uh, Hilton Head, which is, the, is also the PGA Tour, the Heritage Golf Tournament, which, by the way, went from a million-dollar first prize to four million after Live was created. Yeah. So every single golfer was there last year. I'm sure a lot are going to be there, there this year. All the big names. And, and, and I just love Hilton Head, and I'm going to be there next week. Um, so I just said, you know, do you go to the Masters? Even me, with, I have great connections at the Masters. So even myself, what do you think a week would cost there? Oh, oh, we get a hotel? Hotel, airfare, tickets, oh, man. dinners out. Like, What do you think that would cost? Oh, man. What do you think a week at, at, at the Masters would cost? Great connections, tickets at almost cost. I mean, $5,000. Much more. Almost yeah. double. Wow. Yeah. And that's at cost, about eight grand. Yeah, that's cost. So um, it, it, it a four-day Masters badge, you know, I see them going for ten to 12000 just for the Masters badge to get on the course. I can get that badge for anywhere from 500 to to 1000 a day, which is— That's awesome. You know, it's, it's, I know it's, people are like, what do you mean? That's still crazy, $500. Yes, I think Wednesday's a great day to pitch and putt, and the, the amateur, the, the, uh, there's a lot of different things you can go for. I think Tuesday, Wednesday's great days to go. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then, and, and then I just watch it on TV. But that's what I did last year. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That cost me around three grand for, the, for them. The hotel room. The worst hotel room. <laughs> the worst one. I mean, this is what I was wondering about. You oh, know, the hotels and no, Airbnbs uh, or no, whatever. No, 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 no. Really, Bed Bug Express is five forty a night a night. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it, 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 there's Motel Six, which is five forty nine. Now you can go up. Oh to, my God. Oh yeah, Motel Six is five. There's there is a Motel Six <laughs> in Augusta. Oh, man. That's awesome. People don't realize this too. You go outside the gates of Augusta. You're inside Augusta. The manicured greens and the, you know the the class and the uh, the history of the place. You go outside the place. It's it's uh, whew, it's not the best. It's not the best place. There's no four star hotels. Yeah. There's Motel Six. It's it's an old you know an old town. I want to say other words. I just don't want to get canceled. Um, but um, no, there, there there's some. Listen, here's what it is too. Uh, Hampton Inn. I think that was Hampton Inn. I stayed in last year. One of the choice hotels. So one of the choice one hotels. of the choice hotel <laughs> he builds like the choice one hotel of the, brands. One of the Clarion hotels <laughs> yeah one of those feels very familiar with this one of those one of those one of those hotels uh, was I, I got a deal I got a deal I had to buy four nights and it was six hundred a night if you buy if you didn't buy four it's seven hundred a night so that that was like the, by the way that's the cheapest so you now you're, now with taxes and fees and you know like I, I was trying to tell him listen I'm not using the gym trust me I don't even talk to anyone named Jim. resort fees <laughs> resort fee yeah so yeah um, you should uh, be so privileged Bill Greenberg right. right so that that was uh, about twenty eight hundred so let's let's cost the, let, that's like three grand so you're up to six grand now airfare which is it's not a, there's no direct flights from Vegas to Augusta yeah. so um, yeah we were trying to determine Matt went to Atlanta. But we were trying to yeah. determine if, it, if a South Carolina destination, because it's re it's really close to the northeast. It's the northeast portion of Georgia, yeah. so it's right next to South Carolina. Yes, yes. There's a town down there that's a cool. It's a great town. Old. It's so full of history and charm, and that southern hospitality and great food. Charleston. So you, you can go to Charleston, I guess. My buddy li lives there. I could fly. You can fly nonstop here on Breeze Airlines, which I love. Breeze Airlines. I'm actually flying them next week. Um, they're a pretty new startup. I think I talked about this before. You vouch for Breeze, huh? All right. Listen, okay. the, it's it's the CEO of JetBlue opened up Breeze Airlines. They have uh, nonstop flights to so many destinations that don't offer nonstop from Vegas. And uh, first class, they have the first 10 rows, which you're talking 40 seats, first class for, I don't know, I think it's like 300 each way. I think I'm paying $300 one way. That's unbelievable. I remember when Bill first brought this up. Like, it's unbelievable. Like when, like when the airline first started or whatever, you brought yeah, this Hartford. up. I remember looking at tickets. Not yeah. stop from here to Hartford to go to Foxwoods. The bet DraftKings counter bets at DraftKings. Um, yeah, that's like you can catch it 249 first class one way, it's, which is great. So. It's a beautiful history if you're one of us, of course. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Bill stays with us. Yes. OJ is gone, but I'm here. Unscripted, unscripted with the crack man continues with Bill Krakenberger exclusively on a numbers game at Visa, the sports betting network.